and welcome back to my art studio. Today we're working on a painting. Actually, I've been working on it for quite a while, but it's a little take on history. It's kind of a master study, kind of modern. It's highbrow and lowbrow, which is like my favorite things to play with. So I'm walking you guys through a grisaille painting inspired by the old European masters. I believe Leonardo Di DiCaprio, oh my God. Leonardo da Vinci in part started this style. I know Caravaggio was a fan and when I was doing research for this, I followed several Caravaggio master studies. But yeah, let's get into it. So first I'm gonna explain what grisaille is. It's basically the French word for like shades of gray. And from that you create a value map. So value is just like the art term for like how light or dark something is. If it's a light value, it's closer to white. If it's a dark value, it's closer to black. And basically you end up with like a grayscale or something kind of close to a grayscale under painting. And then you let that completely dry and you go in on top with tints. So a tint is just gonna be a lot of medium and pigment, but you can still see the painting underneath. And you sort of do wash after wash after wash and layering up the color. And it's almost like, unlike a regular painting where you're taking the uh, color and value and drawing all in one go, this process breaks it down a little bit. I know when I talk to you guys on TikTok about this style, several of the graphic designers and digital illustrators mention that they do this style all the time. It's very normal within digital art spaces. And I think that's great. I think it's cool how a style that started so long ago in the Western tradition of art is still being used now. I will also say that a lot of more classically trained artists are probably pretty familiar with this style or something close to it because a lot of traditional painting is very drawing heavy and this style depends a lot on really accurate drawing as opposed to something that tends to be a little more impressionist, which is how I paint, which is why this is so fun for me. It's so different. I can definitely tell that I'm outside of my element, but it's fun. It's fun to play around. I don't think I'll be switching over to this style, but it feels fun to say that I've done it and I think I'm gonna be proud of it at the end. I don't know, I'm halfway through if you can't tell, but I just wanted to show it to you guys, show you some clips of me creating this part of it and then I will do the color part with you guys here and hopefully the finished product will be cool. <laughs> Future Sari, let me know if this worked out or if I crashed and burned, but yeah, let's just hop right into it. So as you can see here, it is a square paparazzi photo. We have Kim Kardashian, Paris Hilton, and I believe Kourtney Kardashian. And it's an old school, like, I don't know, 2007, 2006 paparazzi photo. If you are a late millennial girly, a born in the 90s girly, this is probably going to be loosely familiar to you and I've always thought that these nightlife paparazzi photos with that really direct lighting have always kind of looked like Caravaggio paintings. I'll show some examples here but Caravaggio was also known as the Italian painter of light. The way he used really bright light sources and lots and lots of shadow became something he was really well known for. The style fits that lighting really well because there is so much black. And yeah, I love when a style really fits a subject matter. And so that's kind of what I'm doing here. So now I'm gonna hang this back on my easel and it has been dry for about two weeks now. So plenty dry. I am gonna use oil colors and for my medium, my glazing medium, you can use anything from like linseed oil to gal kid. I'm gonna use this solvent free fast dry gel. It's like a solvent free gal kid. And I'm just gonna use that, mix colors in, create tints. And I have seen many tutorials. I will try to link a couple of the ones that I watched in the description bar. And before we get started with the second part of the video, I am going to plug my own art school. So today's video is sponsored by Not Sorry Art School. Not Sorry Art School is an all-encompassing painting course. I teach it in acrylics, but a lot of what I'm teaching transfers to oils. And the really cool structure of the course is that you pay a one-time membership into it. And then from that point on, once you're a member, you get a new course every quarter and you have access to all of the back inventory. I've been making content for almost two years now. So we have lots of great stuff on there from the foundations of painting, which I use still life to teach kind of the basics of how to paint all the way up to plein air painting and some art history videos where I do master studies. I have how to paint water, architectural landscape, how to tackle the color green. Right now we are filming how to paint portraits. So we're always adding fun stuff to Not Sorry Art School. It's great for anyone from beginner level to anyone basically at my skill level at or below is going to be great and full of really great information that I think will help. I have a really cool community. We have a Facebook group that you get access to. 
and we do a weekly Q&A. So I, I'm incredibly proud of it. I don't talk about it enough, but it is something I poured a lot of love into. It's a great value. And if you're interested, please click the link below, check it out. There's a Q&A page. And yeah, I hope that you can join us in Not Sorry Art School. So here is the reference photo. I will pop it up right here. As you can see, it's pretty contrasty, which just means that it's very bright in spots and then very dark in spots. There's not a lot of middle tones or middle values in there. And so, and there's a lot of reds. So I'm gonna start by making some red tints, some yellow, some warm ochre tints. I'm gonna pre-mix them out. And that's usually how I paint with oils because it's a little bit harder to mix. Oils tend to be a little bit thicker from the tube. So that's just the process that's I have found easier. Yeah, I'm also looking at the reference photo. In addition to there being a couple of really bright pops of red, there seems to be a lot of like warm skin tones in here. Skin tones are usually sort of peachy, yellowy, brown, violety cool shades. It's hard. Skin tones rarely encapsulate one or two colors. Usually skin tone is quite a huge range of color. Even within, you know, one person, there's quite a range of value in color. So I'm going to start by mixing some skin tones up and then mix some of those bright reds. And we're just going to go in and layer. People used to spend a lot more time on paintings, probably because there's less urgency to create content, but I digress. And so I'm going to try by using the solvent-free fast dry gal kid. I'm going to try to speed this up. I'm hoping to get it done in one day, but We'll see. Again, future Sari knows, but, but yeah, let's just jump right into it. When I was researching for this painting, I started by looking at grisaille paintings, and obviously there's plenty of contemporary painters who use this style. Basically, it's just making a grayscale painting that has very accurate drawings, a lot of attention to value, because of course, if you're not mixing colors, you're mixing values. And I, through my research, found that sort of part of the origin of this style of painting goes as far back as Leonardo da Vinci, and he started painting in kind of a grisaille style. In fact, part of the reason why it took him so long to create paintings was because he would blend and blend and add glazes after glazes, many, many layers for years and years. Supposedly, maybe even the Mona Lisa wasn't finished whenever it was discovered because he was just always adding layers to it. I thought that was really interesting. And then I also stumbled into Caravaggio, which totally makes sense because sort of the impetus for the idea that Caravaggio paintings sort of had this single light source flash photography element to them. And I think that sometimes these nighttime paparazzi dance club photos have a Caravaggian essence to them. So I did a lot of studying in Caravaggio. I found a couple of videos where painters were going through the whole process and they started on these tan backgrounds and would use um, one or two colors to build up. And then they would start to go in with glazes and build color slowly and methodically, which is what I'm trying to do. I jumped in with the bright reds first because I'm bold with my colors and I like to try to do as much heavy lifting I like to do as much heavy lifting right from the gun as I possibly can. And even though this style is a little more subtler in its color use, I couldn't help myself. So I started with the red dress and then I began to work on the flesh tones. And I found myself really bouncing between three colors. One is sort of alizarin crimson, a little bit of cadmium red, but mostly alizarin crimson thinned out with a solvent-free gel. And then Indian yellow was another one I used quite a bit. And then I also found myself using sort of a watered down ultramarine blue, not as much, but especially in the later glazes, I found myself using more and more of those colors, which is so interesting because that's kind of whenever you print something from a printer, a lot of times they use CMKY and that is basically K is black, the paper is white, so that's automatically your value. And then CMY, <laughs> hold on. And then CMY is cyan, magenta, and yellow, and those are the primary colors. And so I thought it was funny that the colors I ended up gravitating towards were kind of a variation of that. Obviously not exactly, but I thought that was pretty cool. I also found myself working with lighter, softer brush strokes because unlike the painting style that I use where I am totally okay with brush strokes being visible and juicy, and in fact, it's kind of a, a win for me to have color and value choices nailed with one juicy, big, visible brush stroke. I think 
my attempt at Singer Sergeant, although it is an attempt, not I don't always nail it, but that's always what I'm kind of going for. And this is very different than that. Your brush strokes need to be a little more invisible and sort of you're just glazing and hinting. And I found that that was a pretty challenging thing for me to work against. Also, it was very time consuming. I would much rather just big, bold mistake, let it dry, go back over it. And this process does not lead to that. <laughs> My final thoughts were by the end of the painting, I started to see the form take hold and it sort of emerges from the smoke, which is very different from the way I paint where a painting either is very obviously on track or it's way off track and you sort of just like move with the mistakes and layer and just like go with it versus this where it was much slower, much more methodical but it seemed to have a pretty solid payoff at the end. Now, if you are a kind of painter who doesn't love risk, but you have a ton of patience and you don't mind the tedium of slow, subtle layers, I would suggest trying this style. You would probably really enjoy this style of painting comes together. But I was pleasantly surprised at the end when I added my last couple touches. And the thing about it is every time I thought I was done, <laughs> I would let it dry and then come back and one area just seemed a little flatter than the rest and I would add some layers and then I let it dry and I basically kept doing that process over and over. But with every layer, it does become more lifelike and refined, which is so fun. I will show you guys some video of it up close, but this was really fun. It took a long time to work on a couple reasons. One, because it required so much layering, glazes are translucent. And in order to build up that beautiful, vibrant, fleshy tone, I had to layer and layer and layer and layer, which needs drying in between. And then of course, the second being, this was kind of just like a for fun project. It was probably not going to sell this. It was really just for a little bit of content, but mostly my own amusement, if I'm being completely honest, which brings me to my next point, which is painting and master studies. I think they are so fun. Obviously this is a little bit of a cheeky take on a master study. You know, Caravaggio never actually painted <laughs> paparazzi photos. I wonder why, but Anyways, I did want to just emphasize the fact that you don't have to be a student to really benefit from them. And, you know, a master study can really take you out of your own element. As a painter, my technique, I'm hoping that I've learned something from this. I certainly have a better, maybe just slightly different take on how to approach skin tone. And then also it led me down a path where I discovered a lot more about the history of realism. I will link the channel that I found in my quest to make this little master study. One video is a Caravaggio and the other one is someone talking about the Boston School of Painting, which I could make a whole other video about it. But basically because I learned about this more classical realistic style of painting from you know the more traditional form of european painting caravaggio leonardo um, da vinci and of course the northern european realist portrait painters I think was it jan van eyck john van eyck <laughs> i don't know but because i learned about them i also learned about when american schools finally started teaching representational art again because i guess during the 60s and maybe the late 50s and even into the 70s art schools stopped teaching representational art because abstract expressionism had such a chokehold on the art world. So there's a lot you can learn in art school other than just how to make representational art, but I think it's an asset to learn those things. Anyways, I digress. That's my opinion. But, but yeah, I learned that whenever they re-implemented realism into art schools, whenever they re-implemented realism, they sort of went back to more of this style, very drawing heavy, very Northern, very European classical influenced style of realism. And I never learned in that style. I learned in more of Boston school, like offshoot of that. So think more singer sergeant, more visually based than representational based. So less about perfect real drawings and capturing every detail of a room and more think impressionism, but like way more evolved. That's sort of how I've always painted. So painting like this feels very opposite to me but very fun. I really enjoyed spending time with something like a paparazzi photo. I really enjoyed combining things that feel very authentic to kind of who I am and what my interests are. I've always enjoyed art that isn't always considered the most refined art. I like things that appeal to the masses. My first exposure to art and visual media was TV and advertising and OK Magazine and Star Magazine with 
paparazzi photos in them. And so, you know, to be able to come at a painting with an academic angle and still incorporate the other parts of art that I really enjoy, and yes, they are art to me, it feels very fun and authentic. And I hope this inspired you to do something similar, to do projects that are fun and maybe have no real like meaning to them. This won't become a series for me. This is really just like a one-off playing around. You know, remember to have fun with art and find joy in it. It doesn't have to be so serious. My best ideas have always come from playing around and this is just, you know, me playing around. I don't know if a good idea has come from this, but it's me playing around and I love it. Thanks again for watching this video and it was sponsored by Not Sorry Art School. Can't recommend not sorry art school enough. If you're interested, click the link, learn more information about it. You can always ask me questions, but yeah, enjoy the rest of your day and thanks for watching.